As cars fly by on Interstate 95 along Ridgeland, South Carolina, they get a glimpse of the name of a man with a remarkable life story whose best chapters are still being written today. Growing up in Ridgeland, I grew up on a small farm. The family of eight struggled to make ends meet, like many others in rural South Carolina in the 1940s. Fig and I, we were both poor, uh, dirt poor, I might say, and, and that is we had very little, but we had loving people around us. Fig was uh, always an optimist, and we knew that one day he would do great things. So a lot of GIs would hitchhike. My father would pick them up in the truck, you know. I would see them, I would see this uniform, and I just wanted to be in a uniform. Once a recruiter came to the high school, an Air Force recruiter, this recruiter gave us his pitch. The Air Force was the newest service, and so I just, this is for me. The Air Force would be Fig's future, but not before a high school teacher planted the seed about going to college first, an idea his family was behind. When it came time to go to college, Fig went to Tennessee State in Nashville. They had Air Force ROTC, all of the stars aligned, everything just started falling into place. This friend of mine, we were all studying aviation at the time, and he said, hey, there's an air show going on at a nearby air base, uh, would you like to go? So we went there, and I'd never seen the Thunderbirds before. When I grow up, I want to be just like those guys. And so that became my goal of coming in the Air Force. It was an inspirational moment for me. After earning his wings at Williams Air Force Base, Fig received orders to report to San Francisco on his way to Vietnam. On the day he was leaving, Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated. This moment represented a pivotal choice in Fig's life. Here is this individual that so many of us thought so highly of because he was leading this extraordinary effort for equality, particularly for me and others like me uh, in the United States. And I'm about to go get on an airplane to go to a war 8,000 miles away. I came very, very close to not getting on that airplane uh, just because I, I didn't know it was the right thing to go and do it in my own heart and my own mind. But uh, good thoughts came and I got on the airplane, I went. I'm uh, very, very happy that I did. Fig flew a remarkable 269 combat missions. Following his tour in Vietnam, Fig returned to the U.S. to be a flight instructor at Luke Air Force Base. It was there that Fig tried out and was rejected twice for the Thunderbirds. However, on his third attempt, he became the first African-American to join the team. The first time I saw the Thunderbirds would have been in 1964. I got selected for the team in 1974. So we're talking 10 years later. My thought there is, if it's something that you really want, if you're really passionate about this, stay with it. Fig never had it easy. He was in the Air Force long enough to where he really had to earn his spurs all the way up. So to be selected for the Thunderbirds, you can be sure there wasn't anybody better than he was that was applying. Good to see someone like he come along and serving the country. After flying for the Thunderbirds, Fig moved up the ranks of the Air Force with the support of his wife, Eloise. One Friday evening, uh, I'd been working on a special project with a group of folks. So I said, okay, when we get off, we're gonna head to Andrews Air Force Base City Officers Club. My colleague name was Sharon Knott. Sharon took me over and introduced me to Eloise. Says, hey, meet my good friend, Fig Newton. I understand later she said to her friend, what grown man would call himself Fig Newton, you know? As years passed, Fig's military career skyrocketed to the level of a four-star general. When I really got to know uh, General Newton uh, was when he was the assistant vice chief of staff of the United States Air Force. When people talk about the real deal, <laughs> Fig Newton is one of those guys that come to your mind. Since retiring from the Air Force in 2000, Fig has been an aerospace executive and served on the board of directors for a host of leading companies. He currently serves as chair of the National Business Aviation Association. 
but perhaps his most significant leadership role is the one that has taken him back to Jasper County, South Carolina, as one of the founders of the Polaris Tech Charter School. I really feel like we are blessed to have someone of Fig's character as a director for our programs here. He is not only from the county, but he also has a heart for the community. Aerospace is a really big industry in this area. We have Boeing, we have Gulfstream, and there's a tremendous need for talent. And it's very exciting that General Newton is helping shape our program because it's one of our six career tracks will be aerospace. Fig Newton is a great man. He is a very strong-hearted person. He is courageous. He is a man that I believe kids can look up to and could strive to be like him when they grow older. What I'm particularly focused on is how can I get back and, and have an impact on helping individuals in the community, particularly young folks in the community, to see a bigger world than maybe they are able to see right now. Because I was there, I understand it, I feel that, I know that, and it happens all the time. You just can't quite see how I can, as an individual, get beyond my state. And so I want them to understand that your circumstances does not dictate what your future could be. Congratulations, Fig, on this incredible honor. You deserve it. Congratulations, Fig. Congratulations, Fig. Well deserved. Congratulations, Fig. Congratulations, Fig. I'm excited to know that you've earned this honor, and I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. Congratulations, General Newton. Thank you. Congratulations, General Newton, on your achievement as the 2018 recipient of the National Aeronautic Association's Wright Brothers Memorial Trophy.